Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7 of The Bottom Line. I'm your host Deepak and I'm joined as always by my co-host Syed. Um, just to get things rolling here, I'll start off with the agenda. So we're going to begin with a tech update uh, from Syed. We're going to talk about Amazon and its recent developments with uh, Jeff Bezos stepping down as CEO. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the crypto world again and uh, talk about some major updates there. And we're also going to talk about uh, the key stocks to watch for the upcoming week. And we'll close off the show with a Super Bowl prediction. So with that being said, I'll hand it over to Syed for his tech update. Thank you, Deepak. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, this past week for tech wasn't as big um, with not anything significant happening other than like a few uh, phishing attacks that happened around the world and um, you can find the links to those in the description as we'll put those there but um, I wanted to talk about uh, the solar winds breach that happened um, a few uh, uh, last month uh, in January so um, the so, so there a, re a report came out which um, which said that their um, CEO has verified that the suspicious activity their suspicious activity in their Office 365 environment with the company email account compromised and used to access accounts of targeted SolarWinds staff in business and technical roles. Um, the link to this article is in the description, so please uh, please uh, read it and um, get an in-depth understanding of what happened. But essentially, just wanted to point this out to show how... Um, this attack is going to have a, a major impact going forward. We can't, they, you can't just forget about it because um, this, the impact of this attack, like the scope of this attack is massive. And as you can see there, um, their Office 365 emails are being, um, are being compromised now. So uh, just something to keep an eye on. Okay, thanks, Ed. So Amazon also released their earnings report last week, and I just wanted to share some of the highlights for our viewers. So... Uh, the key facts here to note are that net sales increased roughly 30, 38% to about $386 billion, compared with about $280 billion in 2019. Um, excluding the $1.4 billion favorable impact from year-over-year changes in foreign exchange rates throughout the year, net sales increased roughly 37% compared to 2019, which is showing uh, incredible growth, which we all really expected. Um, operating income increased to about $23 billion compared to operating income of about $14.5 billion in 2019, which is almost, you're looking at another double there. And net income overall increased to about $21 billion, which is equivalent to about $41.83 uh, per diluted share, compared with net income of about $11.6 billion, or $23.01 per diluted share in 2019. So obviously, Amazon's still in a period of tremendous growth. Obviously, a lot of the growth was fueled by the switch to e-commerce and everyone staying at home and doing a lot of their shopping really through through Amazon. Um, another noteworthy announcement uh, that was made during this earnings report is that the founder and CEO, Jeff Bezos, will actually be stepping down as the CEO and will transition into the role of executive chair in Q3 with um, Andy JC to become chief executive officer of Amazon at that time. So... One thing to note here is that a lot of people were thinking Jeff Bezos is actually leaving the company. He's he's not. He's stepping into the role of executive chair, which means he still has a lot of authority over the strategic direction of the company. So uh, investors can be rest assured that Jeff Bezos is still an integral part of Amazon's future. And um, he, he's just transitioning to more of a strategic role rather than um, being CEO and being in charge of like the daily day-to-day -day operations. So Andy will be taking over that aspect of the business. Um, one other important development that uh, I noted in the earnings report is obviously Amazon's looking more and more towards being sustainable in terms of uh, being, going green for the future, right? So one thing that they've noted is that they've ordered hundreds of trucks that run on natural gas. So we're moving more and more away from like oil and trying to reduce carbon footprints, right? So with Joe Biden stepping in, we already expected like solar, hydrogen, clean energy will be the way of the future. So we already see this in place. Like if Amazon's leading the way with uh, trucks running on natural gas, I think a lot of other companies are going to follow suit. So um, this is a nice stepping stone, stepping stone to see um, other companies hopefully uh, follow the way that Amazon's setting. Now moving on to crypto, um, last week uh, it was a big week for Ethereum as it was um, announced uh, earlier this week that they're going to be on um, the 
der derivatives exchange CME and uh, this is big news for the coin and this resulted in the price of Ethereum to go up too. It was almost up um, it was above two thousand dollars Canadian and almost uh almost uh, two thousand US. So um, the CME uh, listing allows investors to diversify their crypto portfolio outside of Bitcoin and it provides an avenue for investors to hedge their ex Ethereum exposure, opening a market where bearish positions in the asset can be readily expressed. So um, Ethereum um, is is kind of it kind of goes under the radar under Bitcoin, but with this um, news coming out, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be great because um, it draws in attention for crypto exchanges such as Bitstamp, Coinbase, Gemini, Itbit, and other ones. So um, I feel like investors are gonna go for Ethereum now based on this news. Um, and again, investors don't expect huge volumes out of the gate, but but like when Bitcoin futures launched three years ago. Um, uh, the asset would gain traction as an easy way to get access to another crypto based network. So uh, this article um, that I'm referring to is in the description. Uh, I just thought I would um, let our viewers know that Ethereum, this news is huge and um, be aware of Ethereum rising. Um, not not like overnight or anything but uh in the near future but speaking of overnight there's another coin going around uh doge as we as you guys may know and uh, uh i just want to ask deepak what his thoughts are on doge coin or like crypto in general yeah yeah thanks that so we've mentioned doge on our episode on one of our previous episodes but uh again it warrants more discussion because i just want to point out the facts here so over the last three months, Doge is up over 3,000%, okay, 3,000%. Um, the last month, 760%. The last week, 140%. And just in the last day, it's up 50%. So clearly, there, there's a lot of hype going around with Dogecoin, right? And I think a lot of it is uh, Elon Musk pumping it as well. Yeah. Uh, Mark Cuban got in on the action saying it's better than buying a lottery ticket, which really, if you look at the returns, kind of makes sense. <laughs> Even now, like, the Super Bowl is starting, and the, one of the biggest trends on Twitter is hashtag Doge Bowl. So clearly, <laughs> clearly <laughs> everyone's talking about it. Um, I, I don't know where the ceiling is with this, right? Like, um, I know one of the concerns is that there's almost like a limitless supply of it. So economically speaking, whenever there's a limitless supply of something, that has downward pressure on the price. But it doesn't seem to matter right now. So hey, I don't know. If, if, if you feel comfortable investing in it, by all means, go ahead. Um, economically, it might not make much sense. But you know what? This market's being irrational. So you never know where it's going to go, right? Um, the Bitcoin, like I, I was looking at Bitcoin's chart. It seems to have done another top. It was close to breaking its all-time high. It reached the resistance and it pulled back. So I think you're seeing a little bit of pullback in Bitcoin and Ether because of those those factors. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I think the long-term trend, like we are in a bullish market for, for crypto. So you know what? In, in a bullish market, whenever you see a dip, you would want to buy into it. So again, like everyone should do their own due diligence. Again, we say that on the show quite a bit. So Make sure you're doing your research and make sure you're making informed decisions uh, on your investments. But uh, I mean, it's, it's just crazy to see this kind of run up in a coin that really started off as a joke, right? So um, again, this markets are irrational. Anything can happen, but uh, just just keep your eye out because even if you're watching from the sidelines, it's it's still pretty exciting to take a look at for sure. Yeah, keep an eye out on uh, Ripple too, and uh, also Stellar, as those are coins that keep uh, going up and down. But like they have potential to go up, as they are like worth like way under a dollar. So definitely keep an eye out on those. And then going back to Ethereum, I did want to mention that like the Bitcoin versus Ethereum thing. So while Bitcoin is the preferred store of value in the digital ecosystem, Ethereum has emerged as a leading financial infrastructure, settling more than twelve. 12 billion dollars in daily transactions according to the digital asset manager gary skills latest report again links to, links to that will be in the description of this podcast so be sure to check that out but like deepak said i want to reiterate the fact that we're not financial advisors so this is only for educational purposes always do your due diligence when investing into crypto or stocks or anything for that matter and know your risk tolerance yeah especially given that crypto has an even larger degree of volatility. So if volatility is not something you're comfortable 
within your portfolio, it, it might not be the best choice. Okay, so moving on to our final topic of today, it's uh, the three stocks to watch for the upcoming week. So I want to start off with uh, Disney, uh, ticker DIS. So Disney's reporting earnings for its fiscal 2021 first quarter uh, after market close on Thursday, February 11th. Now, analysts are expecting approximately $16 billion in sales and a loss of 33 cents per share. Now, Obviously, Disney was one of the companies that was uh, massively impacted by, obviously, the coronavirus and having those lockdowns, shutting down its theme parks. But um, I think a lot of optimism came back into the company, especially as we look towards a post-COVID world, which with the variants, it might bring into question when the opening is really, right? But um, I, I do think there's a lot of optimism within the company. And they also pivoted to... Um, it's streaming service, so Disney Plus. Um, really, Disney Plus is benefiting from the stay-at-home environment that, that got brought into play by COVID, right? So um, you, you've looked at the stock. It, it fell about 40% last March when COVID struck, but now after one year, it's up approximately 25%. So this really shows how investors have faith in the company's business model and its ability to thrive again when the economy reopens with its theme parks, along with the strengthened uh, subscriptions to its streaming service. So I, I think there's a lot of good things ahead for Disney. And I think um, whether this earnings report um, falls below investor expectations or not, I, I do think this is, this is a company that's primed for a strong run into the future. Yeah, um, that that's a great uh, stock you mentioned there, and um, yeah, obviously with people staying at home, uh, Disney um, Disney Plus uh, is something that like um, people are gonna go to, right? That or like Netflix or something like that to to pass their time. So yeah, definitely. Um, another stock that uh, I wanted to talk about was um, Twitter. So uh, this social media platform is uh, they're scheduled to report its uh, their fourth uh, quarter earnings in the upcoming week. And analysts are expecting a, uh, a 29 cent a share profit on sales of uh, 1.18 billion when it reports um, on Tuesday, February 9th after the close. So make sure you keep an eye out on that. Uh, lastly, I wanted to move on to um, Coca-Cola and um they're the world's largest uh, soft drink maker and as you uh, as you guys may know and uh, they're scheduled to also release their q4 2020 earnings on um uh, wednesday february 10th before the market opened so on average um analysts are expecting a 42 cent a share profit on sales of um 8.61 billion so uh, again coca-cola and um twitter make sure you keep an eye out this week for their um for their releases so um after after you see those uh, make a make a judgment on where you see the stock going but analysts are predicting the rise so keep an eye out on these stocks keep them on your watch list that and pretty much wraps up the main content of episode seven uh, we did want to talk about the super bowl and um uh both Deepak and myself are big, uh, big sports fans, and um, I'm personally a big football fan. And uh, it's uh, I I don't uh, for my prediction I I see it I see it as a close game. Uh, I think the final score is going to be 31 to 28 for uh, the Chiefs. Um, but again, Tom Brady is a legend, and uh, every time I bet against him, I end up I end up losing. So, um, what are your thoughts on um, on this game, uh, Deepak? Yeah, I mean, so the Chiefs are heavy favorites, but um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I love rooting for the underdog. And I think Tom Brady at 43 versus Patrick Mahomes at 25. I think Tom Brady is uh, surprisingly the underdog here, right? So obviously with his track record of success and coming up clutch, I, 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 it's hard for me to bet against him. So um, my money's definitely on Tampa Bay tonight. And um, hopefully, hopefully Tom Brady can come clutch for me and uh, – I'll see a nice return on my my bet for tonight, um, but yeah, yeah I, again, I think it'll be a hot, hotly contested game. I think it's going to be very close at the end, but ultimately, I do hope that Tom Brady uh, secures the win for his team. Yeah, um, right now uh, the Bucks are uh, a 
plus 5.5 right now in terms of odds so yeah uh definitely if the bucks win you'll uh you'll be a happy better that's for sure but uh, i just don't i just think mahomes will pull it off and uh the bucks defense has defense has to be really good against uh, mahomes and uh tyree kills so uh we'll see we'll see how what, what happens uh looking forward to the game and i hope everyone else is too stay safe out there and um enjoy the game and we will catch you guys next week with episode eight